Hey everybody, this is Birch, and there's a lot of conversations about BarCon. What is BarCon? Uh, what, what, is, what is going on here? Well, if you've listened to this channel for any length of time, I've talked about conventions, and in particular, a creator behavior at conventions, which kind of steers from being uh, uh, dangerous to just outright reckless, and many careers have ended at conventions, usually associated with after-hours drinking or networking. And this is nothing new. What's weird about it a little bit, and I, I have to feel a little bit uh, miffed. Is that is that the word? That's too passive a word. I've complained about this, and I've definitely gotten uh, people, uh, from, uh, creators, uh, talking about how I'm misrepresenting uh, conventions and that, uh, you know, there's not a lot of drinking and stuff that goes on there. However, um, <laughs> you know, a, uh, a variety of people decided, uh, you know, from Marvel's former talent manager to a ton of creators are talking about BarCon. They're saying the exact same things I've said, which is uh, that a lot of bad stuff can go down. Um, so what's interesting about this, so I, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of um, weird responses. The, the biggest one that is, uh, is uh, telling to me is that a lot of creators um, are talking about how they never participate in BarCon and BarCon is bad and and this idea of, of going out and getting really hammered and, and uh, that is an up and coming creator, you need to go to bars, you need to drink with editors and others. And that's how you get into the business. People saying that uh, they've never done this. Never, ever, 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 ever. Um, and, uh, and, and I've never uh, stood in the hotel lobby uh, talking shit about what's going on. Um, you know, yeah, except most of these names have. <laughs> like there's people... Um, saying, you know, no one truly breaks in at BarCon. It's not what it's there for. Well, okay, the, the truth is actually a lot more muddled. And this is a case where we got to go between what should be and what actually is a lot. So the reality is comics, like pretty much every business, including tech. I mean, like if any of you have ever gone to the Google Play conference or WWDC that Apple puts on or CES uh, in, in January in Vegas, any of these kinds of conventions, there are after parties and there are drinking and many people, um, people from HR, people on LinkedIn, other places will tell you, you need to, you know, a good way to kind of you know, get going with your career is to go to these things and network. Networking is important. Well, comics is actually the same. Um, there are a lot of stories. I mean, you've heard several interviews on this channel from people who said they went down to the convention, they were able to kind of meet after hours and, and that's where they established a friendship and, and got their network established. What a lot of people are saying on Twitter, it's it's a little bit disingenuous saying no editor is going to hire you on the spot at a, at a bar. And that is probably true. I, I would guess that that's very, very true. Um, except that's actually not step one. Uh, you getting hired on the spot is is not step one. It's like step two. Step one is meeting the people. It's getting to know them. And if you are able to go to a convention and get to know some people, particularly in a way where you're getting to know someone not as a pest, we'll get more of that in a minute, then yeah, that's that's probably the step one in a lot of cases to getting to meet the editor in other places. A, a lot of the, the tweets and people kind of denouncing like, I would never do this. Um, they Their origin stories often start with meeting an editor or something at a con, usually after hours at the con, whether it's uh, the Hyatt bar, whether it's the top floor, of the Hyatt, whether it's somewhere in a tequila place in Old Town, uh, in Seattle, whether you uh, you got to um, oh, where is it? the Matador, places like that. There's there's a lot of places around where people meet up and they network, and that happens all the time. Now that doesn't lead to the job, and there's plenty of people who go to those locations to network and then make asses out of themselves because they get drunk or they get taken advantage of or you know, worst story of all, you know, they they wind up getting some jackass who promises them work for sex and then they never get the work. Um, so there's there's plenty of stuff that goes on that way. But like any industry, and this is where comics is no different from all these other industries. If you're able to go to a convention, if you're able to meet somebody, whether it's at a bar, coffee, uh, whatever it happens to be, there is no one right way. Um, to, to actually break into this industry. If you're able to go, you're able to not, you know, make an ass out of yourself. You understand your limits. You look at the scene and if the scene looks like it's devolving into debauchery, you get the, the hell out of there. I think it, it, this is about just being relatively smart. 
um, people, if you go to a, a hotel bar um, at a convention and everyone looks like it's one step away from the Ellis forums, then yeah, you should, you know, you should, a, you should bail out of there because it's not going to be helpful to your career if you stick around and no one's going to remember you anyway. I mean, there was this uh, nice rule that some tech companies would say when, when new people were going down to CES, which is if you're there to network and you walk into a situation where you're pretty sure the per- people you're there to network with will not remember you because they're too hammered, then don't bother. You're wasting your time unless you want to be part of that scene. And that's very dangerous. Um, get out. But a lot of these comments, and the other one is um, uh, Heather Antos uh, notes that, and I think she said it before, you know, there should be mixers or after hour events that are alcohol free uh, to keep people sober. I mean, that, that sounds like a good, it sounds like a fine idea. Would people attend? I mean, that's the other thing where I think people aren't necessarily being honest with themselves is uh, they say, you know, we should have a safe space, uh, no alcohol, uh, all in the up and up. And in the past, companies have done that. I was at a Tokyo Pop event way back when that was like that, where it's like, we're not going to have alcohol. We're just going to keep it, keep it dry. And people are going to get to meet each other and there'll be no shenanigans or anything else. We want to be that company. And one, it was very sparsely attended. And two, the people who were attending were talking consistently about, you know, hey, once we're done with this, where do you want to go for some drinks? Like they were just counting the minutes until they could get out and actually go get those drinks. I mean, a lot of this, it's its not the convention. It's not the networking. It's understanding yourself and, and being honest. And this is where a lot of people fail the test. Like, I, you know, can you go and have a couple drinks and not lose control of yourself? Can you go and have two drinks and not start to want to pop, you know, random women on the ass or, you know, make offhand you know, racist jokes to people? If that's lurking inside of you, and you 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 can't you know two drinks is going to pop it out then yeah don't put yourself in that situation don't don't get there um that's that's the thing a lot of but a lot of people in comics have this almost like i am conan the barbarian i can drink just gallons of mead and i'll be fine and yet they can't they absolutely can't there's a lot of, of tough guy internet people and again just scrolling through some of the people who are making comments here it's like yeah, I've seen this guy uh, hammered out of his mind. I've seen this guy hammered out of his mind. I've seen this guy hammered out of his mind. I've seen this guy hammered and chasing editors, begging to get work and editors leaping into bushes to try and get away. I've told this story before, um, and it's a true story of I was hanging out with two editors at Marvel at uh, this little this little bar, a bar restaurant, I guess. And it's a couple blocks away from the San Diego Comic the convention. I, I cannot remember the name of this place, although I should. I've been there a million times. And it's kind of catty corner to the Hard Rock Cafe off, off the Gans Lab Street. And we're sitting there, and there's a nice outside area, but not a big one. There's just like a, one row of tables that are kind of outside, and then the majority is inside. And it's like a taco bar, and you can get good margaritas there and relatively cheap. It's always painful because at uh, San Diego Comic-Con, everything gets twice as expensive. But anyway, we're sitting there. And this uh, this guy, this this wannabe uh, writer who's written some independent stuff, it hasn't really broken in, um, who everybody describes as a absolute pest. This is a guy who uh, is nobody nobody likes, um, desperately tries to get work. Definitely, if he sees you, he is like, hey, it's me, you know, just inserts himself into any conversation. And we see him coming down the street and these two editors Uh, One kind of ducks under the table to go digging through her purse. The other one like bails to the bathroom and they're like hiding from this guy. And he goes walking along. Uh, He sees me and and I'm nothing. So he just keeps going. And uh, it's like, it's like we have an alert on that guy. That's, that's a lot of that. That's what is going on half the time. Look, I embark on again. I've done videos on this many, Um, you know, the convention scene is an absolute cluster for a lot of people. It's where people lose control. They make stupid decisions. They make stupid mistakes. However, to be, I mean, if we're being really honest, and that's the one part about the Barcon conversation that it doesn't feel it is honest, is lots of people are saying, there's no way that you can break in. I mean, Donnie Kate said, I would argue that no one truly breaks in at Barcon. Yeah, but they do. I, I mean, I, I wish they didn't. And I'm not, I, I, I don't, you know, we should take this as me saying, Yes, uh, getting drunk and hammered and uh, and having these effed up situations is a good idea. It's not. But there are way too many stories of people who first met their colleague, their editor, whatever it else, at one of these situations. 
And no, they didn't get a job on the spot. They didn't like whip out their pages or, or you know, negotiate a deal at the Barcon. That never happens. But they made the relationship. They exchanged the business cards, whatever it happened to be. And that led to the second meeting. And if they didn't meet in the bar, they wouldn't they wouldn't lead to the second meeting. I think the problem with with comics, um, unlike other industries, is that it's easy for tech and pharmaceutical and some of these other companies to kind of shut some of this down because they have this this natural barrier where, yeah, you can meet you know a hiring manager at a bar. You can network that way. But the resume and the information then has to make its way to HR and HR is going to sanitize the whole process. Not always, but it's it's built in more like that. The problem with uh, comics is that there usually isn't that process. If you meet an editor for under whatever circumstances, however it happens to be, um, and then you uh, and, and you know then then later there's a job. There's not somebody from HR really checking to see if you know how did this all happen? Is this person qualified? That's the fundamental difference between comics and professional industries. Is that the other professional industries have some checks and balances of how people get hired? Comics does not. To me, that's in many ways the bigger problem than Barcon is that there has to be some mechanisms in place to make sure that however somebody gets in the door, there there weren't a lot of dumb shenanigans in the process. And that's that's where that's where comics is. I, I don't know. Uh, despite and I'll let you in on this. I everybody knows it's it's kind of a running gag. Um, I have a high tolerance for alcohol. I know lots of people say that and they, they don't mean it and everything else. But I do. I we have fun on Friday nights with drinks. But um, I I've never been anywhere remotely close to hammered on these on these uh, Friday streams. Uh, sorry for, for for popping the bubble there. Um, but a lot of that has to do not with some kind of crazy superpower, but just being relatively bright about it, drinking over a long period of time, not slamming stuff. Hey, when you're at a comic convention, don't do shots. Make sure you eat before you go. Make sure you drink water like like those things are just common sense. Um, and, and, you know, so if you're going to go do this kind of stuff, just know how to pace yourself. Um, don't let anything in a comic convention be your first time when it comes to drinking. Like if you, if you're interested in getting high, don't get high for the first time at a comic convention surrounded by other people who are trying to break into industries. That's a stupid time to do that. Same thing. If you, it's like, I've, I've never tried, uh, you know, uh, absinthe. Yeah, at a comic convention, after you've been walking around in a hot hall, probably not eating or drinking enough, it's not the time to have a lot of absinthe. That's that's a dumb time. Don't don't make don't be don't have those be your first. But regardless, uh, Jim Zub has a thread that I think is probably the one of the most honest threads in this thing, and I I, I do appreciate it. And yes, he's been on the show and everything else, but I, I think he's honest. He's talking about, um, you know, he says uh, friendships have formed. And good experience, good impressions made, but I've also seen people unleash awkward, embarrassing, career-ending moves. That's absolutely so. That said, the vast majority of it is touching base with friends, not hunting down gigs. If you go to Barcon intent on generating work, you'll be sorely disappointed. That is correct. The editors and art directors most able to get future projects going are also the ones least looking to be inundated with introductions at a hotel bar. In those situations, you can only do damage. And he goes on, but he's right. What he's basically saying here is, yeah, uh, networking, meeting people and all this stuff, it does happen at conventions and bar con. It does. And and we're, we're, we're lying to each other if we say it doesn't. However, you're not going to get work on the spot. And you also have to be able to read the room. If you're trying to get work from a particular company and you're clearly annoyed, like that guy who's wandering down the street trying to ambush various editors in order to get work, um, that that's never going to happen. And unfortunately, there the editors all talk. And everybody in the comments can be trying to guess who this person is. But if you think about it, it it's not hard. Uh, but it, it's it's these there's a handful of people out there who have a reputation of being absolute pests of trying to get work and trying to really hustle and trying to like, I'm you know, you, you, everybody's met this person, the annoying person that won't leave you alone at a bar. Definitely that exists. And definitely there's people who have used kind of their positions to try and take advantage. We've had, you know, a year of stories on that. But um, like I said, Zub, Zub has a good, I mean, Zub's basically saying, whatever it is, make it your own, um, you know, try and have a good time. You should try and have a good time. You should know your limits. You should read the room. Yes, it's going to be helpful for networking. Yes, it's going to be one way to get work inside of a convention. Uh, but it's also a really quick way if you're, if you're dumb, uh, 
<laughs> sorry, if you're uh, if you don't understand those basic social tenets, um, you're likely to do more damage than good. So always the case, if you're unsure, drink with friends, drink with a group, don't go in front of a bunch of colleagues, people who are possibly going to stab you in the back and, and do that. And, and it's time for the industry to actually start being honest with itself. Uh, like I said, I like Zub's uh, thread because it's honest. He, he tells both sides of it. Uh, a lot of people are going, I've never in the military. Those that that is nonsense. Come on. Uh, that's not helping anyone. It's not helping uh, improve anything. And then then crazy suggestions. Look, it would be wonderful. Yes. If there was a nice professional HR driven, no alcohol uh, networking location for people to see things on the up and up. Uh, but there's not. And the people in the industry regularly sabotage those attempts when somebody tries to make them by not attending them or making fun of them or other things. And hey, if you are a senior editor at a company, um, you have the power to create such an event. So, uh, you know, do it. D do it. Show us how it's done. I, I think the industry could use it. Anyway, there, Barcon, it, it's <laughs> this is more dry. I could have had more fun. I need to do a second video where I'm just uh, kind of ragging on all this stuff and making fun of it because it is it's one of those things where it is funny. I mean, I was laughing my ass off when I was sitting in that bar while editors are kind of diving into the bathroom to avoid somebody. Um, it is funny. It's tragic, uh, but it's also funny. And uh, definitely, I've seen plenty of careers ended, absolutely, at these places. Just, um, you know, maybe a better way to put it is uh, there, there aren't great shortcuts to breaking into comics. There may appear to be some. And in many cases, your career to breaking in comics is not... Uh, linear, meaning you don't just like work hard and every year you get 20% of the way closer to breaking into comics. It's usually a lot of work with very little return. And then suddenly you're in the right place, right time, right pitch, whatever it happens to be and magic happens. That tends to be more of how it works. Me, uh, Emerald City Comic Con's coming up at the end of the year. I'm hoping to get some friends together, do a live stream or something from a, uh, a private room in the Matador, which would be great. Um, and just, just try and have a good time. Every time I've gone to one of these things, um, I have consistently, whenever I'm the host or, or bringing people in, we've had a lot of good stuff to drink. We've had a lot of good food to eat and, uh, everybody has got back to hotel room without craziness. And that's, uh, <laughs> I want more. Can you do than that? Yeah, I am. I am comics dad. <sighs> Thanks for.